So in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use a cheap digital projector to create some incredible lighting techniques. So to do this, you're obviously going to need a projector. I actually picked up two projectors. The first one was a real bargain at only £20. It's only a thousand lumens, but it does have a 720p output. I actually dropped it, so it is looking worse for wear. And it's also got older inputs, which is really annoying. But once you get around that, it is actually very usable. So the next one was £50, but this one was in amazing condition. And it had loads more features, such as aspect ratios, HDMI input, lens shift, and a much brighter lumen output. You could also get a 1080p projector if you stretch your budget to about 150 pounds. In my opinion, these are only really beneficial when you're doing front-on projection. As with 720p, you can really start to see the pixels. But for everything else, 720p was absolutely fine for me and they are significantly cheaper than 1080p ones. So the next bit of kit you're gonna want is a hazer. This will allow you to fill your room with a light fog, which the light from your projector can interact with. I needed one for this project, so I had a look online and I managed to find one for around £30 that had really good reviews. I put a link in the description to where you can buy that. The hazer filled the room up in about 5 minutes and every quarter of an hour I just topped it up to keep the level of haze at a consistent value. One thing I did purchase with the hazer was 5 litres of premium fluid. This made a huge difference to the quality of the haze, so it's definitely something I'd recommend doing. The next thing you're going to want is a large space to shoot in. This is really important because you want the light from your projector to light your subject but not bounce off the walls. I did shoot in a pretty large space but even then kind of light was bouncing off my walls and it just stopped me from getting that perfect black drop off that I wanted. So to get the best effect from this technique, the larger the space the better. But the only problem with a large space and a small hazer is that you're going to very quickly run out of haze. So you're going to want to have control over the doors and windows. If not, you're going to need something much more substantial to kind of constantly fill the room with a decent amount of haze. You will also need editing and compositing software, depending on what you want to project. I've actually made a video just on this section. There's a link in the description. It will show you in detail the different video and animation loops I'm about to show you. So with this line grid animation, I knew that once I added haze to the scene, it would kind of create these moving beams of light that my tank could just interact with. So this one is just a mixture of video and animation. So I just created this with the intention of framing my talent between the two lines. So I was really pleased with this one, as it was such a quick animation to make. So the next type is just shape animations. So these would just be great to project onto your subject, or just fill the room with beams of light. So on the day, they actually created these really cool kind of scans of light going at my talent, which I hadn't really planned for, but I really liked the look of. So the final type was just finding interesting looking video clips to project onto my talent. All the clips that I used, I just found for free using sites such as Pexels. So on the day, I just experimented with four different types of setup. The first type was front-on projection. This requires you to get the projector quite high so it goes over your camera op's head. So typically you'd film front-on with a setup to try and minimize your talent shadows. But on the day, I just took advantage of these shadows as they just had this really cool clean crisp edge to them. So this setup is super simple. Fill your room with haze and then get the projector behind your subject. So you're going to want to try and get the projector up high on this one as well. So it interacts with your talent's head and shoulders. Otherwise, the final effect can just end up looking a bit weird. So with dual rear projection, you want the projectors to be behind your subject, but hitting them at 45 degrees from each side. This way you'll get very nice edge lighting. So the main advantage to doing that technique is that you can light your talent a bit more and help them to pop from the background. So the last technique I did was overhead projection. This was significantly harder than the rest simply because you have to get your projector directly above your talent. So I did this by ratchet strapping my projector to an old jib. Be careful when doing this as I actually dropped my projector. I don't know how, but after a one meter drop, the projector still functioned for the shoot. I then just ran a few different line and shape animations. I really like this animation as it just created these really cool cones going over my subject. There are so many different types of projection you can do. I wish I had a bit more time in the day so I could have done some side-on projection as I think that would look really cool. So technically, how did I shoot it? 
With both projectors, I shot them at 50 frames per second at 180 degrees. I found that this had zero shutter roll. Um, I did try higher frame rates such as 60 FPS, 180 degrees, and this started to have a tiny bit of shutter roll. I imagine that any frame rates higher than that, you would really struggle with light as the output on these projectors aren't very high, and also the shutter roll would probably get significantly worse. Because I interpreted the 50 FPS footage at 25 frames per second in Premiere, there were quite a lot of dual frames on the projections. It's hard to notice if you're not looking for it, but 50 frames per second would have been better through the projectors. The only problem for me was when I tried that, I got a lot of kind of shutter roll and also a lot of deterioration in the images. It's definitely better just trying out different frame rates for your projectors and seeing what it looks like before you actually do your main shoot. So, like I was just discussing, there are a few downsides to using projectors. These are all the ones that I noticed while shooting my footage. So the first one being, occasionally you can get a weird stutter in the footage. Throughout the shoot, I didn't have much of an issue with this, but it did happen occasionally. In some instances, I actually used this stuttering to my advantage to create a very unique effect. You can also get this very weird sort of banding when your camera focus and your projector focus start to meet. Mainly when doing the front on projection, I noticed this, but I did start to notice it in other types of projection as well. You can also get something called a raccoon eye, and this is where your image creates a sort of color spectrum. I didn't find it happen too often, but it's quite exaggerated with heavy movement. On Clover, my model's hair, she actually has black hair, but I noticed in places it would go to purple or to green. Depending on the colors in your scene, sometimes this is quite easy to correct. So the last one is that cheap projectors will almost always have old bulbs, and if their lumen output was quite low to begin with, with an older bulb, it will actually be significantly decreased. All this meant for me was, that you had to use a higher ISO to expose correctly for certain shots. This isn't really ideal because you're not going to get the best quality footage off your camera, but personally I don't think it's enough of an issue to not use projectors as a lighting tool, because most of the time, if the shots are interesting enough, a lot of people aren't going to be noticing these small imperfections. So I hope that was helpful, I tried to keep this video as concise as possible. If you have any questions, just write in the comments and I'll try and get back to them all. Also check out the video I've done, there's a link in the description showing most of the clips that I shot to music. So check that out if you're interested. Thank you for watching this and I'll see you guys soon.